Okay, my friends, I am really, really happy and psyched. I have been saying for years now that it is not the carbon that is causing the problem. It is the expansion of the gases that is creating global warming. Because gases just don't float off into space. They're being crushed down to the earth by the spinning of the earth. And the more we expand our envelope by burning and getting gases, it is the expansion. Now, NASA just admitted it today. They, they put out a, a thing about it. It's only a minute long. I'll show you. And this is what I have been saying for years. Right out here is the concussion of the particles in our outer atmosphere. That's the scrub. That's the scrub zone. You expand the scrub zone, it scrubs harder. Simple as that. And, and they, they now agree with that. And here's what they put out today. Okay, I got this today from my friend from NASA, and he, he was with NASA and the European Space Agency, and he gets all of these things. He sends me a ton of them every day. Now, this is right from NASA, NASA climate change, climate spiral. They're showing literally the expansion of the gases and how the heat is formed because of the expansion. As I always speak about this, as the gases expand, it creates turbulence and, you know, tornadoes and hurricanes and violent storms and all kinds of problems on the earth. And it also creates extreme amount of heat way out here. It's 2700 degrees out here. Now, they're going back to 1886. I'm going to let this play and I'm just going to speak as they're going through it. This is every year how the temperature sort of drifting around. It's not too bad. It's just a, 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 a. now. So sometimes it comes, sometimes it goes, and I'm going to show you why that happens. It's because we are concussing through the atmosphere of the galaxy, really. However, once we started doing industrialization, it started kicking off. Now we are expanding our envelope like crazy. Now I'm not saying that's exactly what they're representing here, but it is exactly the representation that they should be because this is the spiral of scrubbing, 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 and then we start to scrub like hell. And why? Because by this time globalization has caught up with the with the you know, um, the whole world. Originally, up until, let's say 2000 or so, you weren't having a lot of factories all over the world and then having a lot of people burning everywhere and doing all this stuff. Now it's so, and, you know, planes and airplanes and jets and, and it's just the amount of gases that are being forced into the atmosphere are filling us up like a balloon. And it just gets worse and worse and worse, hotter and hotter and hotter. And now we're in a zone where we're just really so overheated now that we're never going to get out of this. The only way is to shrink these gases back down. And how can we possibly do that and still continue our industrial way of life is only through free energy, which I will show you how we can do. All right, we're in the Milky Way, which is a galaxy. I don't know if this is a representation of it, but this is a galaxy. All the stuff spins in a spiral around the galaxy. So we're being ripped through the galaxy. Now let's see what that looks like from our sun's perspective and our perspective. All right, this is we're going through the arm of the Milky Way. And what is happening? The sun is scrubbing through all the particles that are in front of it. And they might be dense or they might be weak. That's what changes the, the, the output of the sun is what it's running into and scrubbing. You see the stuff trailing off of here? That's because the sun itself is spinning as it goes forward. We are all trailing, trying to catch up to it and plowing into its light and its particles and its everything that's being stripped off of there, the solar wind, that heats up all of our planets. Right? And we're not only spinning around this way, we're spinning on our axis and we're being dragged forward too at the same time. There's a lot of interactions, there's a lot of scrub going on. Now you see that? That's the sun emitting particles. These are all particles. And it's, this is a, a solar eclipse. So this is really the moon, but it's shielding exactly the disk of the sun. So what are we looking at? We're looking at the radiance and the radiation of the sun. And here's the magnetic fields. And they go up and wrap around just like they would for us, only it's a little more profound here. Because the, the positive wants to get back to the negative. In outer space, they can sort of go as far as they want. But 
it'll try to attract them here. Now, what do we see in here? Red, red, red. Why? Why is that? This is the, it's spinning this way. And as it spins this way and forces itself going that way, the scrub zones are here much more intense because not only is it going this way, it's turning this way. Here, it's going with the particles that are coming. So there's less, but it's still pretty bright. This is very, very, very intense. So it's, it's remember I showed you that other GIF where there was a white, uh, the glowy spots coming off the sun? That's this right here. So we know these particles are coming out of here. We know that it's just spitting out everywhere. So we have to go through them. We know light is a particle. I showed you that over and over and over. So we, and they, they, nobody disagrees with that. And that's what creates our magnetic field is that we are spinning through just like this, this right here is spinning through a field of magnetism, which is the particles. And in this case, it would be a magnet. And as it spins through there, it creates, a, it generates electricity, just like this would generate electricity right around these coils. Exactly the same. Identical. No difference whatsoever. And it's for the same reason, because these particles are scrubbing into those particles. Push to shove. Creates brilliance. Creates particles. It creates exactly what we're seeing. And we have to plow through them. And if we don't get this out of con this this expansion problem out of con under control, we're in just, we're just never going to we're, we're destroyed, because where our atmosphere out there is is plowing through all this stuff is we're getting tornadoes and hurricanes and storms and turbulence and shifting weather patterns and it's very very it's not good at all. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, the only thing that can, any possibility of getting us out of the situation we are in is free energy. This is light from a red laser. That is light accelerating. It's the same wave. It's now accelerating. And then we put it through our venturi. And when we accelerated it, it displayed itself as a particle. And that is actually literally the particle. And it disintegrates right there. This is what the particle looks like right there if you could see it you know just prior to it concussing and then when it hits and concusses at the venturi right here it divides the black and the white and that is supposedly what would give us a ton of increased energy and I can see that it absolutely increases the energy because now we got the black ball and the white ball is separated that's fission that's fusion this is subatomic just enormous amounts of, of energy increase and all we need to do is to put it into a solar collector basically that's it well, the lasers are dirt cheap the venturi is basically free the solar harvester is whatever, they're very cheap too. This whole thing would be very, very inexpensive. And then you feed the power into whatever you want to use to drive your devices and battery packs and cars and airplanes and trains and heating units and lights and carry them out in the woods. Because this you don't have to be plugged into the grid for this at all. Not at all. You carry it around in your hand. And I mean you get a ton of power just by carrying it in your hand. And now they have these new white lasers. This is a red laser. But look at the power. Uh, and they have these white lasers that are just... Whew, I, I can't imagine, you know, how much power they can could, would increase with that a white laser versus a red laser. The green is pretty good. The blue is really powerful. The white is just off the charts. The thing to remember is, I don't care what kind of laser it is, if you can separate and create the muons and the electron showers, which we did right there, the muons are the black balls, they stay the black balls, the electron showers were the white balls, they turn into the electron showers. So we have done what CERN and Fermi Lab would like to do, and now we need to harvest that energy. Now, I have, hopefully, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I have somebody that is, um, supposedly going to be doing a design on this and it should only take a couple of weeks uh, I hope you know if uh, I, uh, I probably shouldn't even talk about it because I don't know about this person yet at all I just got off the phone with him. but I need somebody to step up now he claims to have 
resources and have people and all these things and that's what they do so we'll see but anybody can do this this is not a this is not nothing this is absolutely nothing it's a, just a little venturi it's just got to be tuned correctly so that only the white can get through and then you need to harvest in between where the white before it gets back to the black so you're just barely off the venturi and that energy now is converted as raw electrons very, very, it should be enormously powerful, 207 times more powerful than when we started. That is what they claim.